Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and today I'm attempting to make Pablo Picasso's metal guitar sculpture out of chocolate. I'm fascinated by artists who have original and new creative ideas and despite being made back in 1914, this sculpture looks like it could have been made today. At the time when Picasso made this, most sculptures were made from carving into stone or marble or wood or moulding clay, but not by assembling items together like this one. And apparently most sculptures at the time were also depicting natural things like people or animals, not man-made objects like guitars, because after all a person has already made the guitar. And when I made the guitar cake I remember I tried to make it as realistic as possible, but his sculpture doesn't stick to those rules, he more likes to depict the emotion or the idea of the object rather than realism. To quote Picasso, every child is an artist, the problem is how to remain an artist once one grows up. Now that could be for a number of reasons, one we have less time to be creative when we grow up and secondly we become more self-conscious and critical of our own art. What would you give your drawing out of ten? Maybe a six? I think it was okay, but I think uh, it was a bit disproportionate. That is just like a mess of lines. That's a mess of lines. All my strings aren't straight. That's too long. But then that's pretty rubbish. Five? Why? Why so low? Uh, it's just a bit average. It's a bit fatter here. You know, I'm a bit off. My strings are a bit, a bit uh, wonky. Does art have to be realistic though? Um. Oh, maybe, maybe if it was a, a Picasso, then uh, it would um, it would have been fine. Recreating another artist's work is a great exercise to teach you different creative concepts. So let's make Picasso's guitar out of chocolate. I don't own a tempering machine, so I want to experiment making my own using very cheap things like a bucket of water. And then I'm gonna circulate that water using a fish tank filter pump and then add an aquarium heater to keep the water at the exact temperature that I want. Then I'll chuck my bowl in and add chocolate into that and we'll see what happens. One hour later and the chocolate is not even starting to melt. So let me try putting it into a bag instead because that will allow the water to come into closer contact with the chocolate. It's a bit like making a low temperature cheap sous vide machine. I've made a rough template for this artwork. You can print that out from my howtocookthat.net website. And for the one big piece, you're gonna to need to line it up and tape it together. I'm still waiting on the chocolate in my homemade tempering machine. So I've tempered a different bowl of chocolate in the way I normally do. If you wanna know how to do that, there's a whole video called Chocolate Secrets. If you search for Anne Reardon Chocolate Secrets, you'll find that. Here I'm just putting the template under the baking paper so I can see how big I need to spread the chocolate out. Continue that with the other pieces and once each one is spread out, shake the paper to smooth the top. And if you've got any air bubbles, lift it and drop it to get them out. Once that chocolate is starting to set but it's not yet fully firm, place the template on top of it and cut around it to get all of your shapes. And repeat that with all of your parts. You can see my cookbook in the background there. It's released in stores in 11 days time, it's so soon. I'll put a link below to bookstores that will have it and there's also a link to times and dates of some meet and greets that I'm planning in Australia to sign books in person. So if you live in Melbourne, Sydney or Perth, make sure you check out the information on the website below. And obviously I will update those if restrictions change. I'm hoping they can all go ahead, but. We will have to wait and see in these interesting times. Let's check on the homemade tempering machine. It is ever so slowly starting to melt on the edges. So it might be possible if you like left this overnight, but I just don't want to wait that long. The bag, however, is liquid. And if I check the temperature, that's actually pretty good. So I'm going to put the rest of the chocolate from the bowl into the bag and put it back in the water. Now I just realized I've made a mistake here. I've done this as one piece and let it set, but the part here on this end needs to bend up and around. 
and I can't do that now because it's set. So I'm going to have to cut that end bit off and do that bit again. This chocolate is from the bag. It definitely needed a bit more time because it's a bit too thick to spread out. It needed to be about a degree warmer, but we'll make do. Once it starts to set, cut it out like we did before and wrap it around a roll of acetate. One side of this piece kind of wraps around and the other bit sticks up a bit. So I'm just gonna make it kind of sit in the right spot like that. The neck of the guitar is also curved. So you'll need to make that piece on some acetate too and set it inside a cookie cutter just to get that rounded shape. The cylinder in the center of the guitar is also obviously rounded so we need to make that in the same way but make sure the chocolate goes all the way around. The guitar of course needs strings so for that make sure your chocolate is nearly at setting point so it holds that rounded shape as you pipe it rather than flattening out. There's a bit that goes across the neck to hold the strings and for that you'll need to drape some chocolate over something to hold it in place while it sets. This setup was actually great for tempering chocolate in the bag, and it was also good for keeping already tempered chocolate at the right heat in the bowl. So I'm just gonna leave that one there while I wait for all the pieces to set up, and then I can use that chocolate to assemble. Okay, we're ready. Push down and remove the acetate roll. Add some chocolate and attach that piece onto the baseboard, and then Add the back of that support box. Use more chocolate to add the sides and the top. Now this box was of course one part of metal with the sides bent up at these joins, but with chocolate sheets it's easier to join it together than it would be to have a flat sheet and try and bend it. Add the cylinder. I think mine is a bit too tall. I might have calculated that a bit wrong, but hey, it's art with no rules, so it doesn't have to be the same. If you want to, you can add rectangles of chocolate, totally not needed in this model, but you can see why you would have needed it in the one he made out of cardboard and metal. Then add the neck, just slot that in there, and the triangle at the top. Then add that little bent part across the neck, just slot that in there. And now use a hot skewer to make four holes at the top of the cylinder. Add a string into each hole and then to keep them in place and make it look like they're wire that kind of bend down, just pipe a little bit more chocolate on the end of each one. Pipe some chocolate along the bottom edge and position the table piece where it belongs in the middle there. And now we just need to add the front face, which you'll notice has a smaller S curve than the back piece, which was either to make it look like the guitar was on an angle, or again, just to break the rules of reality. And there you have it, Picasso inspired chocolate guitar sculpture, a perfect gift for an art lover. With thanks to my patrons for your amazing support and encouragement. If you liked this video, make sure you let the algorithm know by commenting, liking, subscribing, turning on the notification bell, watching more of my videos, all those things. Make it a great week by being kind to others and I'll see you next Friday.